All right, so here are some of my must-have extensions for stable diffusion, so let's get started. So if you guys don't know what stable diffusion is, it's basically AI generative art that you could host locally on your machine. Now, if you want to know more information about that, I'll leave a link on the top left right over here for you guys to view, which is the full installation video of stable diffusion that I just recently made. Now to get into it, uh, here is the stable diffusion uh, hosted locally on my machine. Uh, if you hear a little bit of noise, that's because I got my Tesla card running and I'm still trying to sort out some issues with it, especially with the fan. But anyway, uh, you could pop over into extensions prompt over here by going into available and hitting load, you'll be able to see all the extensions that are available to you. Now, one of the must have extensions that you should get is called Image Browser. Now, I'm not gonna type out the whole thing, but you get the idea. It's Image Browser here, and I already have it installed. What it does is basically goes back through your previous um, attempts on making generative art, and it'll actually be able to pull up all the photos from before. So these are a couple of things I was playing around with, with some logos. Uh, I could go into the next page and pull up some more photos of more logos that I was playing around with. And let's see, do I have more? Let's go into the next page and see what I got over here. Oh, here I'm generating some girl faces with different aspect ratios and stuff and motherboards and chips. Uh, let me see, go to the next one. Uh, these are images that I tried to generate of my own face. Here are some of the monitors that I was trying to generate. Uh, here we have something we could play with. So this is, um, once you select it, it'll actually give you all the stuff that you need, which is the generation info, um, positive prompt, negative prompts. But what's really cool is that I could actually take this text and send this to text to image, and it'll put all the stuff that I had here, including the seed number, and I could regenerate that. So that's what you could do with image browser. And it goes back to all your history that you've ever done. Um, so it retains all the uh, generative art that I've made. So there we have it. We got the image created. And it's basically similar to the style and everything that I did with vibrant backgrounds, uh, computer monitor, code written on screen, stuff like that. Art by this uh, type of artist and it's illustration and the negative prompts. Now, here's the next extension that you it's almost like a must have now we always talk about prompting and how important prompting is and this next extension will give you auto completion on prompting so if you go head over to extensions again go to available and go to auto completion uh, there's this one called baru tag auto completion it's already pre-installed on my machine but this is what you want to install and heading back into text to image if i was to say I wanted something called sci-fi. You see how it actually drops down and gives me all the stuff that I need, which is the prompt completion that I need because sometimes I just can't think of the word that I want. Here it is, it's uh, tab completion. Now it doesn't have everything. Like I like the word vibrant a lot because I like the colorfulness, but it doesn't have vibrant at all. It does have other ones like vibrator, but not vibrant. So it doesn't have every word, but it does help with at least giving you some ideas of what you want. So by adding that prompt, I'm gonna regenerate this picture and it should give me a picture of a girl sci-fi. Now very similar to it, but it kinda looks a little sci-fi. Now, uh, the next extension we're gonna talk about, which is called aspect ratio. I actually got two of these uh, installed. So there's something called AR, aspect ratio with AR, uh, aspect ratio helper, I've installed two. So aspect ratio helper, and the other one is called aspect web AR. Now. The Aspect Web AR gives you these buttons on the bottom that will actually give you the size that you want. So if you need a portrait image, you could do three, two, and it'll resize from the bottom height of what you want, and then it'll resize the width. Uh, if I change this over to 792 and hit three, two, it'll keep my 792, but change the width on top. So that is good if you already know the resolution that you kind of need to fit, like 512 or whatever it is. Now there's the other one, which is uh, the Aspect Ratio Helper, gives you this little icon over here. Now, what this does is basically, if I need something that is a portrait image, now it locks it at 3.2. I can slide this over and about, and it'll regenerate the bottom height to match the aspect ratio of what I'm trying to do. So say if I need a 3.12 by 208, I'm gonna hit generate, and it's gonna generate an image that is three by two. Um, I am wrong about portrait. Portrait should be two by three. It's actually one of these down here, or if I go down here, I think I should have something here. You could actually add to this if you want different aspect ratios, but 
you get the idea. You could just choose it so you don't have to calculate anymore what the aspect ratio should be. So this should almost be built into the system because I use this so much. Now, next up on the extensions is uh, system info. I use this because I actually run this on multiple machines, meaning the web browser version off this machine. So sometimes I might be working on a job um, rendering 40 or 50 generations, but I don't know if the computer is done or not. So the system info will kind of give me an idea if something is done. So if I go over here and say generate, let's see, uh, one, two, one, and let's do uh, something like this, 592. I'm gonna generate this picture again. And now I could pop over to system info. It'll actually tell me how many steps. So it's doing seven out of 40 and it'll refresh itself, nine out of 40. So now I know the job is started. It's still got one job still pending and it is doing its, its thing. So if I need to check on my progress on another device than the device that I'm actually currently generating from, I can at least see that the system is still processing something. So you see it's 30 out of 40 and it's doing its own thing. So that's, that's another very important um, extension that I would recommend using. So now it's 40 out of 40. Uh, it's still not complete because it does its own thing at the end. So I'm gonna switch over to here and there you go. Job is complete text the image right over here and there's my image of the sci-fi girl vibrant background colors in a monitor screen now there are a few other ones that i'm using right now that i do want to build a whole video around which is control net and open pose editor but to give you a quick insight of what it does basically control net allows you to put multiple pictures in one or do multiple things in one shot example if i want vibrant colors uh, science fiction uh, mountains. I don't know, I'm just making up words now. I'm gonna generate that. Probably should have made a smaller image, but I'm just gonna let that go. You have a picture of mountains in a vibrant color landscape. What I can do now is uh, save this image, download it because I need this multiple times. All right, open that image right over here and I'll drag this over to control net. Now, because this image doesn't have anything that I really need right now, I'm going to go over to Open Pose Editor. I'm going to add a background image and go over to that same image that I just had. Open that up. And I want this to have a really tiny person standing right there. That's about it. I can make the pose change around. I can move its hands. I could do like other stuff, but I'm just gonna have it like stand there. Like, and then once it's there, all I have to do is save to PNG. I can't send this control net right now because there's a little issue with it. So you do have to save it as a PNG. So it has pose. That means I have another picture right here. I'm gonna head back over to text image. Open my control net unit two or control net unit one. Drop this in there. So now I got a pose. And then I just have to enable everything. So control net, I would enable this. I just want the shape of everything. So what I'm gonna do is drop over to depth layers. In the models, I will have depth. And I don't want it to change too much. So I'm just gonna drop this down a little bit. And then on my control net two, here I wanna enable this and turn this into an open pose. Uh, where is it? Right here. SD 1.5 open pose and I want to add uh, astronaut and make brackets around it so this is more emphasized and let's do generate all right and there we have it technically this is just barely scratches the surface of what control net does I could show you way much more stuff later on in its own dedicated video but here we have our mountain scene that kind of captured from the previous picture. It generated its own like little mountain and landscape over here. Then we have our little guy that was posed over here. And if you combine that together, now I have my astronaut with the background that I wanted. So that's how control net kind of works. There are still a few more extensions that um, not necessarily must have, but I do use them and I'll make another video with just like fun stuff with uh, extensions. Now, if you guys have a couple of extensions that you guys use religiously that you must have, uh, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to take a look at it to see what they are. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.